Swimmers, take your mark. everybody and welcome to On Deck with Florida Swim Network. I'm here with Dave Van Buskirk and we also have Sid on the line. He is with us today. Crazy show, <laughs> lots of things happening. We are shaved and tapered I mean, it by is all means. Serious fast stuff. Quick, let's just get right to it. We're going to dive right in with the uh, game day that we're going to do. Do you know that we're doing a game day? No, I didn't know anything about game we, day. We are going up to UF and we're going to go in front of college swim meets and we're going to have a college game day table, desk, the whole nine yards, and have a game day show before the college meet October 30th. And so make sure you guys are watching. Great opportunity to catch a couple of the uh, Olympic hopefuls there, Elizabeth Beisel, some other folks will be joining us. Great, great time. We'll be talking not only about whatever's going on at University of Florida, but all of the world of college swimming. So let's get to our buddy Sid. Yes. Hey, Sid. Hey, I got a quick question for you. I know we just got finished with districts, but, you know, as a coach, what are kind of, now that we're out of districts, what are some of the things that you're, you're seeing coaches start to do preparing their swimmers for not only regionals, but also states? That is a good question, Dave, because coaches definitely do something different once we finish with the district meets. And of course, after tonight's finals, all the districts will be over and we'll know who's moved on to the region level. I know that we tend to focus a little bit more on those athletes that are going to score at the regions and hopefully qualify for states. It's usually a little bit more room in the pool because your district swimmers, you know, they, they helped with the team depth, but they're not the ones that you're focused on as you move forward. Might do a little more sprinting, a little more pace work. You kind of focus your cycle in depending on what your program is about. I know we've enjoyed it because we do a lot more toys with the sprinters and we've had some pretty good success with sprinting this year. So when each coach looks at what they have, they decide, okay, now here's what we need to do to get these guys ready to go to the next level because the region meets where it's at. So, Sid, with that, I mean, what, what are some of the names that you're seeing down there in South Florida that we should be looking for here in the next couple of weeks? Great swimmers from South Florida are going to make a difference. For the boys, St. Andrew's Club and Boca High's Brody Heck, fastest man in the state last year in the 1500, the future Auburn swimmer. He's looking to defend, as is the 3A champ, who was just a little bit slower than heck. Raphael Marcoub won those events in that for Fort Lauderdale High. You look at Cody Klein going to Brown. He's going to be awesome. Set a county record in the fly. I know that for the girls, I think about the, the dynamic duo that's going to the Florida Gators from Gulliver. They are going to be unbelievable at the state meet. Kelly Fertel and also Nikki Urquidy. They will be at the top of the girls' ranks. And I have to look across the, straight, across the state to Kendall Brent because she's been rocking it this year. She committed to Yale, and that girl is really going to get it done. So all in all, I think South Florida is going to be well represented over the next couple of weeks at regions and states. And speaking of names, Joe, guess what? We are now ready to get into this district results here I'm ready, man. I, I We've talked enough all season long. Here's now we start trekking towards states. It's about, about time we finally get to this. Yeah, that's right. Here are our results so far. We'll start with the Class 1A districts. The 200 freestyle is going to be a great battle between Emma Ferry and Raiden Hall. Uh, Ferry comes in with a 156.25. She's going to be leading the field. The boys' side is going to be really interesting between Santiago Corredor and Derek Peoples. Great battle, 145.56. 147.16 is going to split. So that's going to be a great, great battle. But keep a close eye on Lucas Kravchenko. He's sitting in that third position, 147.48. 
Now over to the 200 IM. Great, great swim in the districts with Karen Liu. Kane went out in a 210.58, led the rest of the field. Delaney Russ sitting in that second position with a 226.73. Interesting battle between her and Chloe Weininger with a 226.99. Go over to the boys' side. Dane Rust was your leader with a 201.90. Interesting battle there between Rafi Chamison with a 202.39 and Coleman Kramer with a 202.50 holding that third position. Position down. Now to the 50 free. Victoria Willis was going to be your leader with a 25-29 coming out of districts. Close to her is J.B. McGargle with a time of 25-43. Oh, what an interesting battle between her and Katie Dye. Katie Dye sitting third with a 25-46. Over to the boys. David Sears with a 22-73. Travis Russell is going to hold that second position down out of districts with a 23-51. Keep an eye out on James Phipps, 23-86. Holding that third position, interesting boy situation. So to see all the results from 1A and 2A, you can go see them on our website. Do you know what we did this weekend? What did you do? GTSA meet. We did 10 hours a day of streaming. Poor Bellage. <laughs> Standing for 10 hours a day. Crazy stuff. You know, by the way, guess who we've got on the show? Who? We've got Barry Creighton and Safe Refat. Refat? Did I say that right? I think you said that right. Perfect. They are coming up Winter Park High School. Can't wait to talk to those guys. And speaking of which, it sounds like it has been a crazy schedule, not only for Florida Swim Network, where you know the coaches and everybody coming in, the swimmers coming in today. Speaking of schedules, we're going to have Caitlin uh, Freeling is going to talk about college athletic schedules right now. Hey guys, Caitlin Freeling here to talk to you a little bit about the training schedule of an NCAA swimmer. And also, if you're not interested in it, another option or another route that you can take. So when you become an NCAA swimmer, you're gonna be going into two a days, you know, three or four times a week, and you're also gonna be adding in weights, and you're gonna be adding in dry land. So if that's not something that you are interested in, and you want a little bit more of a fun, relaxed, le a little less training atmosphere, an atmosphere like that, then you can head over and swim for the club team for the university. So. If, for example, the University of Florida has the NCAA team, but they also have a club team. Um, this team, they still go to meets and they still have a nationals and they have a lot of fun and you get the team camaraderie and you have fun at practices, but it's not as grueling as the NCAA schedule. I actually had a teammate that swam with me in sprint group, Sarah Bateman, who had a blast, did all of her four years eligibility with our NCAA team and then decided that for her last, she was finishing up school for her fifth year and for that last year that she wanted to join the club team. So she went on over there and had a blast and she kept raving about how much fun it is. So if that's something you're interested in, there's definitely that option. While visiting the Dayton Raiders, we were reminded not all drills are about perfect body line or balance. Sometimes the focus is about training and power. Why do it? For your more advanced athletes, Overloading systems can help them develop their fitness level, strength, and quickness. How to do it? Grab a med ball. This particular one weighs 8 pounds. The swimmers will hold the ball out of the water while they perform flutter kick on their side. They'll need to use the sculling action of their hands combined with a fast, firm kick to maintain the ability to get air. How to do it really well, the fine points. It's very important to remember this drill isn't for everyone you'll need to already have your basic skills mastered. This is for your more advanced athletes, and typically, this type of exercise is done for short distances with high intensity. If the swimmers are unable to perform this, try reducing the weight of the med ball or add a pair of fins. You can also try other standard balance positions if you really want to challenge. Just make sure you're ready. Breakout. A breakout is how you reach the surface after a start or a push off. There's people who care where I'm going and good friends who welcome me home. So get up for tank of freedom. Try the American road. And will a full tank of freedom.
Hey everybody, Dr. Brad Burkhardt with Atlanta Orthopedics and I'm here again for your Healthy Minute. Today we're gonna to talk about a really important topic and that's hydration. So your body is made almost entirely of water and if you are swimming, if you're doing high level activities, you're losing a lot of water, about a half liter up to a one and a half liters per hour depending on the activity that you're doing. So you need to be drinking water almost constantly while you're doing these types of activities. If you're feeling thirsty, it's already too late. You need to be drinking water and lots of water during the entire workout. Swimmers especially, you're in the water, you don't know that you're sweating. But if you're feeling thirsty, then you've already passed that point and you should have been drinking lots of more water before that. So drink your water, drink lots of it, and you should have a good practice. We're back with On Deck with Florida Swim Network and here with Barry Creighton and Safe Rafat from Winter Park High School. So cool to have you guys. You, my alma mater, finally on the show. Been waiting for this. Welcome to the show. Thanks, glad to be here. All right, so listen, Barry, you've been coaching for 28 years. You, you and I were talking earlier, 28 years of water polo and swimming. Tell me a little bit about where you started and, and then on through Winter Park. I mean, I started swimming competitively when I was about four. Wow. My mom taught swimming. Uh, my older siblings all swam. Uh, I grew up in California. I went to, uh, we had a very good high school swim program. Uh, Bellarmine College Prep in, in San Jose. I swam with Pablo Morales, who was a oh, cool. you know, two-time gold medalist. And uh, so we had a really strong swim program. I went to uh, Indiana. Uh, I didn't really swim there. My wife was a, was a really good swimmer. And then we ended up here in Florida uh, because she got a job at Boone High School. Oh, I didn't have a job. So you, so. So you coached over water polo over there? Or yeah. did they have water polo? They had water polo. They had club water polo. Gotcha. And that's how you started. And then you moved on to Winter Park, and now we have Safe here. He's, you're a captain at Winter Park. How is it swimming at Winter Park High School? The Wildcats. It's been pretty good. I like it since I came in here. It's, it's been fun. My teammates helped me a lot. It's, it's just fun. All right, so Barry here is your coach, and tell me about some of the cool things that you guys do there at Winter Park. I know that Winter Park's got huge tradition. Some of the really cool things that you do, and, and Barry has you guys do. Best of dinners. What? Best of dinners. What and are those? After, like before the meet, we always go to somebody's house and we eat pasta, just to like group pasta with the dinners. team. Oh, gotcha. All right, so tell me a little bit about this. Okay, so we know we have districts coming up. Your districts is in a few days. How are you preparing your athletes for districts? Because we're, we're right here. I mean, it's time. Well, hopefully everybody's getting pumped up. But, uh, you know, we have a, some kids are, are, the district meet is where they're really pointing, and they're all rested and, and tapered for that. And some kids, like SAFE, are pointed towards a state meet. Um, and, I mean, our goal is, we got two goals. One is to win the meet. Uh, and the other is to get as many as many swimmers as we can to, to regions and then hopefully to state. Wow, safe. Nice. How, you, how do you prepare, you know, individually, how do you prepare yourself? Uh, I want to win district champs again, be three times in a row since I came in here. Oh, you, so you won it last year? We did win it last year and we won it in sophomore year too. And uh, I just want to finish it good in senior year. So what, what's it gonna take? You guys have a bunch of seniors you were telling me earlier. Mm -hmm. um, how does how's the cupboard look after you guys are gone? I don't know. It's, he doesn't yeah. care about the cupboard. <laughs> he, doesn't he, doesn't care. Care about the cupboard. <laughs> he just cares about this year, which, which is fine. <laughs> that's true. That's true. So, all right. So, getting ready, you've got the hundred breasts. What else do you swim? Two hundred IM and the two hundred medley relay and the four hundred relay. So, what's it going to take in the two hundred IM and the hundred breasts to make state? Uh, if I win my time, one minute. For the 100 breaststroke in regionals, I would be going to states easily. And then what's the IM take? For the IM, if I did 159, two minutes again, I would, I would go to states probably. Wow. All right, so now we move into water polo a little bit. You, you've, you've been coaching water polo forever. How do you get those kids ready, you know, all over, um, you know, through the high school season and then boom, straight into water polo? So how do you get those guys ready? Well, it's actually kind of an easy transition because uh, we have all the kids swimming. And then after swim season, we have kind of a short club season, and then the high school water polo season starts in January. So keep them busy. That's yeah. the idea. Yeah. All right. So we we have um, we have a state meet coming up. Uh, they've won a, a few of them over the years. How are we looking this year? And I say we because 
Wildcats. Yeah, of course. So, so how are we looking? I know that, you know, with the, with the high schools and they add more high schools over and over again, it kind of spreads out all the talent. But how do we look this year as a whole? I think we look pretty good. Uh, I'm not sure if, we're, if we're, we have a num the number of swimmers to, you know, compete for a, a championship, but we should have a good number of swimmers in the state meet. It's, uh, I don't know, we're in, the, we're in the large big school division, 4A, so the, uh, uh, the numbers, are, our competition doesn't change that much. All right, that's great. All right, guys, well, we're here. We're going to come back in just a little bit and have a fun time with these guys. We're going we're gonna to have our true-false game. You guys ready for the true-false game? Of course. Yep. You, have you guys ever seen the true-false game before? No. I've heard great things about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, guess what? Dave is in the other room speaking with Winter Springs High School coach Eric Christensen. Let's go take a look. Real quick, let's talk about age group swimming. Okay. What kind of, uh, tell me a little bit about how did you end up starting off swimming? Um, I started, a friend of mine uh, went to church, wanted to uh, join a swim team uh, for the summer. And uh, my parents and, and, he, and his parents were close. We joined a team uh, for a summer league team and never, and never, never, uh, we kept on going ever all, all the way through um, past, past the summer. So in, in uh, college, four-time uh, All-American, mm -hmm. uh, what was your, f and also you, I think, uh, did fairly well in NCAAs. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me a little bit about that whole in NCAA experience. Uh, it was a great experience. Um, uh, it's, the, it's the fastest short course meet in, in the world, uh, for shards anyway. Um, and it's really neat to see schools um, from all over the country coming to this one place for this fast meet. Um, my, best, my best place at, at NCAAs was fourth in the 400, 400 individual medley. How did you get involved and why, did, well, let me more importantly, why did you get involved in triathlons? Uh, I got involved in triathlons to basically, it's some, something, some other place for me to compete with. Um, when I did, when I was in, at Florida, you know, I had swim meets, mm -hmm. uh, but now I was training and I didn't really have anything to really, you know, brace at. So I, did, so I tried to do a, a couple triathlons and okay. uh, first, first triathlon I did, I did okay, uh, but nowhere near up to my standards. So I started really, you know, working at it and, and training for the next, the next year and next uh, races. So. Well, Eric, thank you very much. Good luck not only for this season with uh, over at Winter Springs. Good luck with not only the Masters, but also the triathlons as well. Okay. And thank you very much. All right, thanks. Thank you. Boy, that Eric Christensen is a tough dude. I've been on the bike with him. He is crazy, studly fast, that guy. Anyway, we're going to go look at more results now from the 1A and 2A this week. And also, don't forget, you can see them on our site, floridaswimnetwork.com. Check them out. Now on to the 100 fly. Karen Liu is going to be your early leader with a 59-49. Great, great uh, race between Selena Nishada, 103-15, and Hannah Howard won a 103 06 coming out of districts. Voice side, Derek Peoples, demanding lead there coming out of districts with a 5270. Andrew Mills with a 5418. And Andrew Brown, nice little battle between the Andrews with a 5472 holding that third position. Now to the 100 freestyle. Victoria Willis came out as your 1A district champion with a 5469. Close battle between Joey Weiser with a 5488 and Jamie McGargle with a 5492. And on the boys' side, it was Mason Milan with a 51-46 to take the win, and Matthew Meisel with a 51-82 holding second. Keep an eye out on Giza Marashak with a 51-93. Nice close race there for the boys. Now let's open up the distance a little bit more. The 500 free, Emma Ferry, with a 504-91 commanding challenge there coming out of District 1A. Ariana Chamonson holding that second position with a 534-67. Careful though, Reagan Swindler holding that third position with a 536-49. Boys side, Santiago Corredor, 442-65, commanding 25 second lead over the rest of the field with Jeffrey Sober holding that second position with a 505-11. Have you been to our website, floridaswimnetwork.com yet? We have many pages with all the water sports for you to look at. You can also send us results, photos, and stories to info at floridaswimnetwork.com.
There's people who care where I'm going And good friends who welcome me home So get a full tank of freedom Drive the American road And with a full tank of freedom Find your own highway We'll take you wherever you go Take you wherever you go Remember the feeling? New goggles, a new cap. When you support the USA Swimming Foundation, you provide a gift that won't fit in a box. A gift that helps young athletes fuel their competitive dreams. One that provides potential life-saving swim lessons to children. Your gift, it really is impossible to wrap. The USA Swimming Foundation, saving lives and building champions. All right, great part of the show where we do true false. You guys know true false, of course, right? Yeah, got it. I mean, you mentioned to me earlier, safe that you 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 like fill in the blank. No, you don't like fill in the blank. I don't know. We like multiple choice, but you never say anything about true false. Yeah, that's true. But I like true false too. Okay, it's so you ready for them? Yeah. All right, this is all with high school questions. High school swimming questions. This is question number one. 1920 to 1939, high school state meet was at Rollins College and was in the lake. Safe, what is your answer to that one? True. True. Do you, how do you know that answer? It just will be interesting. I looked that up before in the website and I found that. He looked that up. Okay. We talked about it before. You that. did. Yeah. You did. Barry, so what do you think? I think it was, I, I was looking up uh, the old records in the Florida high school record book. And uh, for all the Winter Park, you know, state champions and whatnot, and I was like, Rollins College, holy smokes, right down the road. Well, you know, I know. Well, you know, in Dave, and, and Dave, so he was, back then he was a ref in 1920 to 1939. He was a ref for that meet. So how cool is that? All right, let's move on. In the girls' competition, the, their first year was in 1945 and weren't allowed to go underwater. Safe. False. False. So when, you think they started at the same time? or? Yeah. It can't be just underwater. Like, they can't allow that. <laughs> okay, okay. Mary? I say true. True. Gotcha. It is false. They both started in 1920, and they went all the way through. <laughs> all right, let's go on to question number three. Winter Park High School. The girls have won 12, and the boys have won 13 state championships. True. True. You guys talk about that often, or? Uh, not really, but I believe in that. They're, they're pretty. They're pretty it. good. Yeah. Barry. That's true. Yes. All right. That's, that's true. true. All right. Now we are at one question left. This is the big question. Bring okay. So far, what are we? We're a thousand dollars and a thousand dollars. Is that where we are right now? <laughs> I'll take okay. That so too. this is the tiebreaker. <laughs> Winter Park boys won their first state championship in 1939 when Dave was 18. Ooh. I say true. True. Yeah. Is that true to that Dave was 18, or is it true that there's 39? It's 39. Okay, Barry? I say false. I think it was 1940. It was 1939. So very good. So Ooh. you win all the money. <laughs> all the money. Well, listen, guys, I, I, thanks for joining us. You guys have been great, and good luck this year. Super excited to see you guys swim. And when we come back, we are going to... Uh, Talk with Dave a little bit more, but right now we have more results. Let's take a look at those. Now down to the 100 backstroke. We're going to have Olivia Humple with a time of 104.28 to take the lead here in 1A. And Emma Foster holding that second position with a 107.44. Audrey Wilson, though, keep a close lookout. She had a time of 107.57. Boy side, Luka Kurchenko with a time of 54.39, holding a great lead coming out uh, for the boys. And Andrew Mills with a 57.45. Matthew Mizell might be right there with a 58. 47. And in the 100 breaststroke, it's going to be Lisa Ramnick with a 109.79 three second lead over the rest of the field, which contends to be Courtney Copeland with a 111 flat and Delaney Russ with a 114.29. On the boys' side, David Sears with a 100.38 is going to take the lead coming out of 1A. And it's Dane Russ holding that second position with a 101.52, followed by Andrew Brown with a 102.02. 
Welcome back to On Deck with Florida Swim Network. And you know what? I can't wait to the day I get to interview my alma mater. That's got to be a great experience, man. Well, they, I, is that high school around anymore is really what the question is. <laughs> it is around. My high school is around. Great show. Again, if you Jam -packed. have any, it's been a crazy show. We've been, you know, fast paced as all get out. Um, but, you know, any kind of results or anything you'd like to send to us, please don't forget to send it at info at floridaswimnetwork.com. And, you know, Sid's also joined us. Sid, listen, Sid, any closing remarks on, on what's going on down there this week? Love to, love to hear what you got to say here. Yes, good point, Joe. South Florida, thrilled that we've gone to the ability to have athletes out of the top eight from our region qualify for states. Some coaches don't like no finals, but we really like getting our best kids there. Hey, Sid, thanks again for, for all the contributions you do to the show. Excellent, excellent perspective. One tip for everybody this week, Flex, P-H-L-E-X dot U-S, came out this week with their site. You need to go check it out. Whoa, whoa, what is that? It's a goggle that has, like, a time clock in it. It has your heart rate. It has all sorts of cool, cool things inside your goggle while you're swimming. Seriously? It's, it, who's speeding this to you? The coaches or, or no? It's the the sensors inside the wow. inside the goggles. That's intense. That's intense. Again, district wrap ups. Keep sending them to us, folks. From everybody here at Florida Swim Network, Dave, Sid, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on deck.